Ms. Legalista here, AKA Attorney Sheila. Thank you for joining me. This video, I've put off talking about this. This city council member who was found in his car, I guess after smoking something that was not legal. And I think he had actually just gotten out of court too. So I have a few things in common with this person. Yeah, let's take a look at it. You can see Riley sleeping, his mouth wide open as the officer approaches. Riley has a lighter and a pipe in his hand. The officer rouses him from his sleep. Do you have any weapons on you? No, not at all. Oh, uh, uh, no way, dude, really? Yes, yes. I was just taking, I was just on my way back from court. Bro. Uh, well, arrest is going to come check you out, man. I can't let you go. You were literally choking in your sleep. Somebody flagged me down about it. Oh, I have sleep apnea. I'm sorry. Well, and then you have a crack pipe in your hands, so it's like... Wait, sorry. Listen, I, I have a body camera. Obviously, yeah, everything obviously. I have is recorded. You know that. And I, what I've observed is on camera, so I can't pretend I didn't. You know, so a is going to come here, oh, and they're going to check you out. You know, you, you, as far as I know, there's no drugs anywhere, so I no. can't. You know, so there's not a criminal investigation. There's more a health or well-being check type Thank thing. Thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I obviously have to document it, you know. It's sort of already documented just with the film. So it's interesting. His first comment was, um, so I have a sleep apnea, but let me go back and show you what this looked like here, how he was. So this, this is what he looked like. Um, and this would be concerning to anyone. You don't know the condition of a person when you walk up if you're the officer or if you're just a person walking by you don't know if the person has had a heart attack a stroke if someone has done something to the person and so yeah you call it in and hope that someone's going to show up and take care of this person if there is an issue now he said he has sleep apnea and there are a couple of things going on here. And one is, yeah, when most people get caught, they want to know whether or not they're going to be arrested, whether or not they're now going to have this criminal charge and that they're going to have to show up in court and answer for it. And everything's going to be all public. Things that we used to be able to hide in private, they are now going to be public. He is an elected official, which presents additional issues for him. Most people aren't elected officials. So when they do something wrong, most people in your city don't care, right? But if you're an elected official, if you're an attorney, if you're in some of these other professions, even a teacher, you know, there is an expectation that you have handled these problems or taking care of them and not that you're passing out in a car and someone has to come and check on you. The officer questions Riley about his drug use. He's forthcoming and discusses struggling with addiction. How long have uh, you had this problem, man? It, it, was, a, it was a relapse. I think 13 years. Uh, I just went through a really, really bad divorce recently. Okay. Relapses, you know, when you start talking about a death of someone close to you, divorce, losing a job, losing a child, going through mental health issues or physical health issues can be triggers that can be really hard for someone who has been okay for a while. And now this trigger has sort of pushed them over the edge. Now, some people are saying in the comments, they don't necessarily believe him, but divorce can be a trigger. It can be one of those things. If your divorce is very tough, uh, whether or not that's true, I don't know in this case, but he does mention it here. EMTs arrive to check out Riley as the police officers search his vehicle, which is littered with trash and junk. The officer found a chore boy scouring pad in the glove box. Chore boy is made of copper and metal. 
Drug users sometimes use a chore boy to make a crack pipe. You got a test kit? Yeah. So, um, it's over here. A second officer arrives. They approach the vehicle to test suspected drugs found in the car. So this part's a little interesting and I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. It looks like they're going to test something that they found in his car, but I thought he said that he didn't have anything else in his car. Um, he said he didn't think it was laced with fentanyl, but you never know. You never know what you're getting when you're buying drugs for someone else. You are trusting that they're giving you what they say they're giving you, which is something illegal. So I'm not sure why you would trust someone with that. And you're literally putting your hands, your life in someone else's hands. But that is addiction. That is addiction. You don't make rational choices in those instances. We're all in a tough spot, but we gotta do what we gotta do right by the we'll numbers. It'll help you in the end. Believe me when I tell you. And you'll say to us a month from now, good best thing that ever happened to me. That's what they all tell us. You can't go down this road anymore. No, no. God forbid we find you dead. That, that would, that's terrible. You yeah. know what I mean? You were down in the car. No, I mean, I've been putting this up for the 17th. You know, I talk about second chances in some of these videos and usually i'm referring to people who may have done something had to go to prison and gotten out and now they're sort of starting back over again and we're wishing and hoping and praying that their second chance gets them back on the right track because we want to see people live productive and successful lives for themselves in this case this gentleman you know, this is his second chance. He purchased something. You never know what you're getting. And the fact that he just fell into a deep sleep, it, you know, it could have been so much worse. It could have been so much worse. So he is having his second chest moment right here, you know, and he may have a few more. But it's, it's, it's nice to see that he may get the help that he needs now. I know he said he relapsed and um, that had happened because of his divorce. I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully he gets his life back on track. Hopefully he's able to get the help that he needs. You guys can go to Law and Crime Network to watch the video for yourself. I'll put the link in the bottom. And I do want to talk about some of the comments. Let me just run through some of the comments for a second. I don't want to talk about them too much um, because you definitely had a lot of people who talked about their own addiction in the comments. One person said, big respect for the cop that said, a month from now, you'll be thanking us. He's so real for that because I was neck deep in a similar, in a similar way. It took getting arrested for me to see how bad things had actually gotten. I hated the cops that day, but that was what kick-started my sobriety. This person says, I struggled, but I can see the pain this man is going through. I hope he gets the help that he needs and gets better. Another person said, I'm glad he's okay. Um, this other person says, we believe in you, so believe in yourself. He was treated with dignity and respect in the midst of a binge. I'd love to see the same empathy projected toward all people. Yeah. So hopefully he'll get the support that he needs. Um, and sometimes, sometimes we have to have a, a kind of public fall before we realize we need to make some changes or that we have the strength to make changes. But um, hopefully he can get back on the path. This will be the start of his his road to a second chance. You guys let me know in the comments your thoughts and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.